What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite. It's all the good and bad from Apple's October event, so let's break it down. Now, everything we talked about last week pretty much happened, and can you guess what the headliner was? If you said the new Mac Mini, you were wrong. Now, it was all about Apple's new shiny toy, the iPad Mini, so let's take a look at our quick look with Scott Stein. Hi, I'm Scott Stein, and today has been iPad Day, the smallest in the iPad line. The iPad Mini has been announced, and this is going to be available on November 2nd. It is 7.2 millimeters thin, very, very thin, and feels extremely light. It's got a 7.9 inch display, and it starts at 329. Now, that's maybe higher up than some of the doorbuster tablets that are out there, but it packs an A5 processor, it's got FaceTime HD. It's got optional LTE for configuration starting at $460. And it's got a 1024 by 768 display that matches the iPad 2s, but the text seems a lot more crisp and readable comparatively because the display is a little smaller. It doesn't feel like a retina display, but it certainly feels readable for, for email and feels more readable than it would on an iPad 2. Well, a lot of people are going to want these A for the price and B because of the fact that it's more affordable. And it comes in black and it comes in, so in aluminum <laughs> with the feel that sort of reminds me of the iPod Touch 5th gen and there are a variety of smart covers that fit it as well. Pre-orders start imminently and it will be available alongside the new 4th generation iPad which has an upgraded A6X processor. So these two are going to be available for the holiday season and this seems to mark the resetting of the next generation of the iPad lineup. I'm Scott Stein and this is a look at the new iPad mini. Thanks, Scott. Now, guys, I'm not really the target market for the iPad mini. I know there's a lot of you out there, and it looks pretty slick. I expected a higher price point than the iPod Touch, but packing just an A5 processor and no retina display for a 329 price point, I'm not feeling that. Now, they'll still sell a bunch, but competition is fierce with quality 199 tablets in the 7-inch space. Now, Phil Schiller asked, what can you do with the iPad mini that you can't already do with the iPad? Well, this, you can hold it in one hand. I can actually hold the current iPad with one hand. But this takes me to the biggest surprise of the keynote, the iPad fourth generation. We expected an updated iPad with lightning connector to be announced, but no one expected Apple would completely replace its guts, bringing an A6X processor that doubles its CPU and graphics performance, a FaceTime HD camera, twice as fast Wi-Fi, and more compatibility with 4G LTE networks. This is a whole new, new iPad just seven months after the new iPad was announced. Now, Tim Cook called the third gen their fastest and best-selling iPad to date. Now, it doesn't even exist on the Apple Store. I know there are plenty of you that feel burned by this shortened life cycle. I'm all for upgrades, but this fast, we're throwing out the bad Apple at you. Now, Cena reports that if you purchase the third gen iPad within the past 30 days, some Apple stores, but not all of them, will allow you to exchange them for the new iPad 3S. Excuse me, I meant the iPad 4. Now, pricing remains the same starting at $499. Pre orders start on the 26th, and for those of you who have an iPad 1 or even a 2, this might be a pretty sweet upgrade for you. And where was iTunes 11? Well, Apple says it's coming in October, just a few days from now, so maybe they're just messing with us or November could be the new October. All right, the new MacBook Pro 13-inch with Retina display made its debut starting at $16.99 for a price point with no optical drive, dual Thunderbolt ports, HDMI, and USB 3. These are sweet, sweet machines that you'll pay for, and they're available right now. But the biggest drawback is a lack of a discrete graphics card that you can switch over to for handling graphic intensive apps and something the 15 inch Pro has that the 13 inch just doesn't. Mac minis get an update as well starting at $599 with a quad core processor option, Thunderbolt and USB 3. The Mac minis are available now. And you know what? I like to save the best for last. And for me personally, it was the new iMac. Who says desktops are dead? Do you see how sexy and hot that thing is? Well, the new iMac just kills it with its doomy baby design, featuring a display that's as thin as five millimeters around the edges. You'll get all the latest connectivity and a new Fusion Drive custom option, which is different from the typical hybrid drives we've already seen on the market. Now, Apple's Fusion Drive stores frequently used things like apps, documents, or photos on a flash storage space, while infrequently used items move to the main hard drive. It doesn't cache or duplicate the data like a typical hybrid hard drive does. 
Now the 21.5 inch iMac starts at $12.99 and is available in November and the 27 inch model starts at $17.99 and will be available later in December. But the biggest difference between the two is the 27 incher's ability to have four user accessible memory slots that you can upgrade. You won't be able to do that with a smaller iMac. And I like bigger screens because the images are bigger. All right, let's get to our Kensington Key Folio giveaway. Over 500 of you guys wrote in with what you think I should say to get James' attention. Like Sara BH, who suggested I say, Hey, Jamie? Yeah? Are you Google? What? Well, you're everything I've been searching for. Keep searching. Next. Or Zach Straley, who said, try this. Um, so if you were a pirate, mm -hmm. would you like your parrot here? Or here. Really? Well, Jordan Mensel said to go with this. <laughs> Excuse me. I need a band aid. I scraped my knee. Falling for you. Brian, I have a band aid. Okay, so that didn't work out so well. But the magic comes from Thomas Shushler, who told me to say, Hey, so Jamie? Can I unzip your, your files? Yes. Now that's game with a capital G. All right, congrats to all of you who we mentioned. We'll be in touch. And best of all, the keyboard case works with the new iPad New. Now we want to hear from you guys. What did you think of Apple's keynote? Were you excited and juiced up? Were you let down? Do you feel Apple is losing some of its magic? Well, email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com and we'll read some of your responses next week. And before we go, I just had to include this picture of another super cute Apple biter. We want to wish Aaliyah a happy birthday who just turned two. We've got nothing but love for you. And for all you grown men watching, I won't do the same thing if you send me a picture like that. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's show. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple. Hey, that what? was a good show, huh? Yeah, those pickup lines were kind of dumb. What? No, yeah, they're just dumb. They don't work. Hey, I, I got one for you. What? You make my software turn to firmware. Oh. <laughs> you get like a loop, loop. No? No, oh, come on, man. There's no fun. You get that one at all? Yeah, I'm afraid I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So, check this out. Check this out. Uh, you want to get drinks? No. At the Genius Bar? Get it? Genius Bar? <laughs> you okay. are a moron. <laughs> this is going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs>